This is the getting ready lesson before lesson 10.2. We're at 10.2a, applying proportional reasoning to ratio problems. Back in lesson 4.2, we learned about proportions and proportional relationships. And the proportion is a statement that two rates or ratios are equivalent. So we would have going two miles in one hour, it's two miles to one hour, and that would be equal to four miles in two hours. These are in proportion to each other. We doubled the two miles to four miles, we doubled the one hour to two hours. A proportional relationship, well that's a relationship between two quantities in which the ratio of one quantity to the other quantity is constant. We could say that there's six miles in three hours and eight miles in four hours, and we could continue on. We also learned in lesson 4.2 about dependent and independent variables and quantities. Dependent variable, that's a variable whose value depends on the value of another variable. An independent variable, that's the variable that the dependent variable relies on for its own value. Was that confusing? Take a look at this example. We have y is equal to 5x. The value of y is the dependent variable in this scenario because its value depends on the value of x. If x is equal to 6, then y is equal to 30. x is the independent variable in this scenario. y is the dependent variable. To make my cinnamon honey butter recipe, we combine four tablespoons of honey and one half teaspoon of cinnamon for each one cup of butter. So how much butter will we need if we use 12 tablespoons of honey? First, we explain how we know that the dependent variable in the proportional relationship should represent the number of cups of butter. The words for each one cup of butter, right here, that tells us the quantity of honey depends on the quantity of butter. So that means the honey is the dependent variable. The unit rate for the relationship is 4 to 1 of honey to butter. There's 4 tablespoons of honey to 1 cup of butter. The graph helps us to visualize the relationship. We can see these are the cups of butter. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And here's the tablespoons of honey, starting from 1 and going all the way up. The triangles, we have a triangle here, 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 and here, help us represent the fact that for each 1 cup increase for the amount of butter, 1 cup, the amount of honey increases 4 tablespoons. For each triangle, the ratio of the height to the base is 4 to 1. The constant of proportionality is 4 to 1. The origin, 0, 0, where x is 0 and y is 0, on the graph shows we'll use 0 tablespoons of honey when we use 0 cups of butter. So how much butter will we need if we use 12 tablespoons of honey? An equation for the relationship is y is equal to 4 over 1x, or 4 over 1 is just 4, isn't it? So we could say y is equal to 4x. We have 12 tablespoons of honey is equal to 4x. We divide both sides of the equation by this 4 to isolate x to one side. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we have 1x. We have 3 is equal to x. If we use 12 tablespoons of honey, we'll use 3 cups of butter. We have 4 to 1 is equal to 12 to 3. Now, look at this line. Look how steep it is. See that? I'm going to show you something for looking towards 8th grade real quick. When you get into Module 3 in 8th grade, so it's like Chapter 3, you're going to be learning this, so I thought I'd introduce it very quickly. We have our cups of butter and our tablespoons of honey. This line is called the slope. It's the slope of the equation y is equal to 4x. 
we have our rise, which is 4. That's how much it's rising up. And we have our run, which is 1. So 1 cup of butter, 4 tablespoons of honey. We have our rise over our run, and it's going to equal the slope. That's the slope of the line. So we had 4 to 1 is equal to 12 to 3. 4 tablespoons of honey for each 1 cup of butter is equal to 12 tablespoons of honey for 3 cups of butter. We can model the situation with the proportion. 4 tablespoons of honey to 1 cup of butter is equal to 12 tablespoons of honey to x. And if you remember, we can do cross multiplication. If we have 1 times 12, whatever 1 times 12 is equal to, then 4 times x will need to be equal to that. And that would be 4 times 3, so we know x is 3. The product of 1 times 12 is the product of 4x. See that? The product of 1 times 12 is the product of 4x. So using proportional reasoning, if we multiply 4 times 3 and get 12, we need to multiply 1 times 3 to get 3. The constant of proportionality, 4 over 1, or 4, is the unit rate. Using y is equal to 4x to solve for x, we have y is equal to 4x. We divide both sides of the equation by 4 to isolate the x to one side of the equal sign. We get y divided by 4 is equal to x, because that's 4 over 4 is the same numerator and denominator. So that's just a 1 for like a 1x. We don't need to write the 1. So remember, when it says to solve for a variable or like solve for x, that means x is alone on one side of the equal sign. So how many cups of butter will we need if we use 36 tablespoons of honey? We just substitute 36 for y. We have 36 divided by 4. That's equal to x. x is equal to 9. That would be 9 cups of butter. That would be a lot of cinnamon honey butter. Okay, are you ready for a real tricky one? Pay attention. It says Tala makes a snack that uses five cups of peanuts for every four cups of cashews. Find how many more cups of cashews she needs if she uses five and a half cups of peanuts than when she uses three and a half cups of peanuts. So think about what it's asking. It's asking us to compare. So we're going to need to subtract. It's giving us this five cups of peanuts for every four cups of cashews, but then it wants to know the difference of the amount of cashews when peanuts are five and a half cups compared to when they're three and a half cups. So we have five to four for our peanuts to cashews, and we have five and a half cups of peanuts, so I'm going to use a decimal 5.5 for the amount of cashews would be x. We do 4 times 5.5 and get 22, and that's going to be equal to 5x. See, whatever this is equal to, this is equal to. So we've got 22 to 5x, or 22 divided by 5x. We can do 22 divided by 5, and we get 4 and 2 fifths. Do you remember when we're doing the long division? The remainder is the numerator, and the divisor is the denominator. Do you remember that from the earlier grades? So we're going to get 4 and 2 fifths x. Now we do it for the 3 and a half cups. We do 5 fourths is equal to 3.5x, and 4 times 3.5 is equal to 14, and that's going to be equal to 5x. So we have 14 divided by 5, x. And 14 divided by 5 is 2 and 4 fifths. Now we need to compare them, so we need to subtract. We've got 4 and 2 fifths, x minus 2 and 4 fifths, x. Do you remember how to subtract mixed numbers? This 4 and 2 fifths is the same thing as a 3 and a 5 fifths and a 2 fifths. 
So 4 and 2 fifths is equal to 3 and 7 fifths. So we do 3 and 7 fifths minus the 2 and 4 fifths and get 1 and 3 fifths. So we didn't have enough in the numerator here to subtract the numerator 4 here. So we needed to regroup from the 4, turn it into a 3, and give 5 fifths to this fractional part. We end up with 1 and 3 fifths more cups of cashews from when she uses five and a half cups of peanuts compared to when she uses three and a half cups of peanuts. Now that was a tricky one, and if you need to rewind and go back and watch it again, it's no big deal. But don't gloss over it because there's going to be problems like this coming up in your homework and maybe on a test. We finished 10.2a, we're going to move on to 10.2b, using dot plots to make inferences. Now do yourself a favor, if any part of this lesson was really confusing, go back and watch the lesson again, and if any parts of the lesson from previous grades was confusing, because it was a while and you may have forgotten it, I'm going to have links in the description of this video for you to go back and do a quick review. Have a great day, and please join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.